To date, there have been tens of thousands of enzymes discovered by man, and therefore, if we have no way of grouping them together, it would be very hard to study them one by one. And so here I will be discussing the classification of enzymes. They are actually classified using what we call as the EC numbers, EC standing for the Enzyme Commission. And there are essentially six EC numbers or classifications, starting from one, going all the way to six. And the basis of these different numbers is the type of reaction that has been catalyzed. Okay. Oh, by the way, before we proceed, take note that every time the suffix of every enzyme is ASE or ACE. Okay. So EC number one houses the class of oxidoreductases, which are enzymes that catalyze primarily oxidation and reduction reactions. That's why the suffix of these enzymes are either oxidase or reductase, occasionally dehydrogenase. Now, this should also make sense because in organic chemistry, dehydrogenation is almost synonymous to oxidation. Let's have this example here. Our substrate is ethanol, and our product here, going from left to right, is ethanol, or its common name, acetaldehyde. Now, look at the name of the enzyme. Going from left to right, our enzyme here is alcohol dehydrogenase, which is perfect because dehydrogenase means oxidation. And if you go back to organic chemistry, when an alcohol becomes an aldehyde, that is literally oxidation. But notice that I actually have here two arrows, meaning that most of the time, enzymes catalyze reversible reactions. Though most of the time, the direction going from left to right or right to left would depend on other conditions, which is outside the topic that we have for now. Let's move forward to EC number two, transferases, which basically perform transfer of something. Now, let's have the context transfer of transfer here. When you say transfer, you must have two things because you must get something from the first thing and then that thing which you got, you give to the second one. So for example, an enzyme that ends in kinase usually transfers phosphate. So here, our enzyme is called hexokinase. And we have two molecules or reactants, which are ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. So it's adenosine, whatever that is, with three phosphate molecules. And if you know your carbohydrate structures, this is the structure of glucose in the cyclic form. And you can imagine that our hexokinase enzyme gets one of the three phosphates from ATP and gives it to glucose such that the products are glucose 6-phosphate and ADP. D here stands for di, meaning two phosphates. And of course, the reason why the three phosphates have been reduced to two is that that one phosphate that we lost has been given to glucose, giving it a name like this. So that's the meaning of transfer. You get it from something, but you pass it on to another one. Now, other than the suffix kinase, other transferases luckily just end with the suffix transferase. So it's very easy to spot. Amino transferase, acetyl transferase, methyl transferase. So um, very, very easy to detect. Next, easy number three is the family of hydrolases, and as the name implies, the main reaction performed here is hydrolysis. Usually, the types of uh, functional groups that are hydrolyzed are, but not limited to, est uh, esters and amides. For example, you might remember from our discussion of lipids that this is the structure of a tag, a triglyceride, which is comprised of glycerol and three fatty acids. And we should know, we should remember, that looking at its structure, it's a triester, three esters. Such that if I add water, we can break these bonds, isolate glycerol as a free molecule, and then these three things would separate as three molecules of fatty acids. The enzyme which helps us convert a triglyceride to glycerol and free fatty acids is actually called lipase, although I already used the complete word hormone-sensitive lipase. There is a way for us to recognize a hydrolase. It's usually if I have the suffix ace 
and its prefix is literally the substrate. So lipase means an enzyme that breaks down lipids. That wasn't the case a while ago, right? Because, for example, the word alcohol dehydrogenase has the suffix dehydrogenase. If it was a hydrolase, probably it would be something like alcoholase, as in direct. Or like, uh, if I have glucose, I have hexase, something like, or glucase. So that's not the case here. So the moment that your prefix refers to the substrate and immediately ends with the suffix ace, you know it's a hydrolase. For example, urease is something that breaks down urea. Or protease is a, is a general name for any enzyme that breaks down proteins. Or nuclease is a general name for an enzyme that breaks down nucleic acids, etc. Okay? Next, easy number four is the family of lyases. And uh, there are two distinct ways that we can uh, know that we have a lyase. One is that if we have uh, addition or removal of a carbon-carbon double bond, and our knowledge of alkene reactions would come in handy here. So an example of a reaction that would follow this definition, addition or removal of double bond, is this one. Here I have the substrate with a double bond, which is called fumarate, and by the enzyme fumarase, okay, we have the addition of water, which if you can remember, in organic chemistry, if I add water to a double bond, the double bond is converted to a single bond, and then water is added as H and OH, which the product here is called malate, which is not really important. What matters is that we see here that the reaction is either the removal of a double bond going left to right or going backward, the addition of a double bond. So that is something that lyases can do. Another distinct definition of a lyase is something that could remove functional groups. So usually if I have an enzyme that has a suffix starting with de, like de carboxylase, de aminase, de whatever ace, then it's a lyase. For example, the name of this thing right here is dopa. And then I have the enzyme name dopa decarboxylase. When we say decarboxylase, we're saying here removal of carboxyl. And that means the purpose of dopa decarboxylase is to get rid of this. That's why if you look at the structure here at the end, the COOH has vanished, giving us the name dopamine because the only remaining functional group in this portion is the amino group. Okay. Next, we have EC5, which refers to isomerases. Notice when I start here and then I continue to EC number 6, which I don't know why I don't have the name here. Let me add the name. Okay. EC5 and EC6, you don't see structures anymore because I'm trying to say here that you can actually identify an enzyme based on a reaction even by just looking at the name of the substrate and product. The structure is not actually a strict requirement. For example, look at this one. My reactant is glucose 6-phosphate and by the action of the enzyme phosphoglucomutase, the product is glucose 1-phosphate. Isn't it in organic chemistry, we have this little trick wherein if I have almost the same name before and after, and there's only a change in number, you know very well that's a type of isomerism, specifically positional, because there's only a change in the position or the locant number. So even without drawing glucose, because I don't have space anymore, you can try to copy-paste it here, but you don't have to, right? Because the moment you saw the number here, and that's the only thing that changed, you're kind of confident already that you have one isomer interconverting into another, and therefore, you know that the enzyme here is an isomerase. So suffixes are mutase, or isomerase, or epimerase. Most uh, isomerase is actually just in an isomerase, so just like transferase, it's quite easy to detect. Finally, we have EC number 6, which are ligases, and ligation okay, usually refers to condensation reactions. Remember, when we use the word condensation, it means joining together of two things with the loss of water, okay? So for example, one classic enzyme that's under the ligases is citrate synthase. Citrate synthase combines acetyl-CoA, a two-carbon compound, and oxaloacetate, a four-carbon compound. Two plus four is six, which is citrate, which is the reason why it's called citrate synthase. It makes citrate. So usually ligases end in the suffix synthase or sometimes synthetase. Um, the difference being 
synthesis uses use energy, synthesis do not. Although sometimes these words are used interchangeably. Now, another special class of ligases are called carboxylases. And if decarboxylase has the intention of removing COOH, then therefore carboxylases have the intention of adding COOH. Just like this, pyruvate plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is actually our version of COOH in biochemistry. Can be uh, combined by pyruvate carboxylase to give us oxaloacetate. And that would make sense, right? Because if pyruvate has three carbons and carbon dioxide has one carbon, 3 plus 1, so oxaloacetate has 4 carbons, which is already stated here. So it makes a whole lot of sense. So here, again, my intention is to just orient you to the six main types of enzyme classifications and examples of reactions that are catalyzed. We will encounter a lot of these enzymes, especially when we go to metabolism.